Secure user memory, the purpose, code data on execution isolation of a secure user firmware. Principle, a user flash vision executed at boot time, whatever the boot mode configuration. Once executed, the secure user part is closed and cannot be accessed anymore by any means until the next boot. It's configured thanks option byte, so it's a static protection, and it's supported on G0G4 family, H7, L5, and on the L5 this mechanism is also called HDP. The secure memory on the G0G4 family. So it's an area located at the beginning of the flash and executed after the reset. The configuration is done thanks one option byte, sex size. There is a second one if you've got a dual bank and could be only modified in RDP level 0. So if you combine sex size with RDP level 1, if you want to remove the secure memory, you have to do a regression from RDP level 1 to RDP level 0, which implies a flash mass error. The granularity is a flash memory page size, and this secure memory can be locked at application execution time. Then the secure memory is no more visible. You just have to write in the flash register. But I will just detail after that we can also use a services from the RSS or the system bootloader. Debugger can be disabled when executed some sensitive data, so it could be really useful in RDP level 1 when you want to do some secret usage, like authentication or decryption. So, as previously said, the secure memory could be locked thanks to services in the system bootloader. The reason is that as soon as the secprod bit, so the bit in the flash control register is set to 1, the secure memory becomes invisible to the whole system. So if you do it in the secure memory, then you will be in fault because even you, the core can't access the, to continue the program. And if you are doing it after in the non-secure part, imagine a hacker managed to connect just before this, he could just stop and manage to see the contents. It's why we've got such kind of services. So if I sum up the reset, then the option by loading, this is done by hardware. Then we've got code execution in the secure memory. Then we will call the system bootloader services to set the secprot bit. Then the secure memory becomes invisible and we jump to the application code execution. And in the application code execution, we can't see what is in the secure memory. It's completely invisible. I just show you the flash control register secprot bit evolution. And then the debugging link, which is enabled. Then you can decide to disable it to do something quite secure or quite secret, I would say. Then don't forget to re-enable it to be able to connect on your targets. Then the debugger becomes available. Now for the GDO, we've got an additional features. If you combine the boot lock with the RDP level 1, then by default the debugger will be disabled. I write here caution because if you don't have the re-enable of the debugging link inside your code, you are on RDP level 1, but you can't connect at all on the board. Even the bootloader is not allowed. So take care, there is no way to recover from this situation. So here we've got the classical system, but imagine we've got the boot lock plus the RDP1, then the debugging link is, is I would say, disabled by default. Then you need to re-enable it, then the debugger becomes enabled. So really important, that means if you erase your chip and you don't have this re-enable of the debugger and you are in this configuration, your board is bricked. Let's talk now about the secure memory on the STM32H7. This configuration could only be done in the secure access mode. That means when you activate the security option byte, bit, sorry, to one. The secure memory error is executed after the reset, whatever the boot mode. There is one secure memory error per bank, and it has the granularity of 256 bytes. The secure memory is locked thanks to services in the RSS. The secure user memory can never be accessed by the debugger or by the Cortex M4, in the case you are in a dual core. So, the same schematics as on the G0. On the reset, we've got option byte. Here we've got the RSS boot. You can have the detail of this boot inside the reference manual. Then we've got the code execution in the secure memory. Then you need to call the RSS exit secure area services. Then we jump to the application code execution and the secure memory has completely disappeared. From the debugging link point of view, the debugger is disabled during all the secure memory execution. Then it will become enabled. So here you imagine the risk. If 
You've got a configuration. When you configure all the option byte, but have nothing in the secure memory area, then you will never jump to the application code and your debugger is, I will say, disabled. So caution also here. So in the secure access mode, to configure the secure user memory area, you need also to call a root security system services. So that means you need the execution of some firmware to be able to configure the secure memory. This is quite different from the G0. I will have just an animation after to make you better understand this. So as I previously said, the secure user memory configuration could be removed on RDP level regression or flashbank errors. But if you error the secure memory error and keep the option by configure, then the debugger is disabled because you will start it on the secure memory error without any code here. So we get stuck in this region and there is no possibility to recover. So really take care with this. Now the animation to show you how we can activate the secure memory area on the H7. First, we need to have the secure access mode. So the security bit and the option byte set. Then we need to program the, fir the secure firmware in the future secure memory area because it should be here when we will start after. Then we will prepare the parameters for the sec area start, so the value we want to put in the option byte, but it's not our code that will, will configure those option byte. We will just pass those parameters to a services of the RSS, which name is reset on initialized secure area. On that turn, there is a reset, and you get this configuration now. That means you are booting on the RSS, which select which user memory, secure user memory should be launched. Then it will jump to the user memory. And remember about the access, debugging access is only possible outside the secure user memory. Same things for the Cortex M4, the second core when you are in dual core. Of course, the core uh, M7 could access to anything. Let's move now to the secure memory on the L5. So here it's closely linked to the trust zone configuration, but I want to have a couple of words here. So the secure height protection, also called HDP, on close this part cannot be accessed anymore by any means until the next boot. It's located at the start of the flash watermark based secure area. To sum up what is a flash watermark based secure area, I would say on the L5 we've got a Cortex M33 with a trust zone. And when this trust zone is activated, you've got two worlds inside your chip, the secure one and the non-secure one. Here, that means the HDP will be inside the secure world and at the beginning of the flash. It's configured thanks to option byte, so an HDP activation, and then the HDP end, which is the end address, because the beginning is the beginning of the secure part. Across all the family, I think it was clear, it was on the L5, all the version H7, G0, and G4 on specific device. So you have to check for each one the reference where it's possible or not. I think that's all for the secure memory. Now we can go on with hands-on.